Hello and welcome to the first lesson of the Cody House course about CSS animations. At the end of this course, you'll be able to uh, create some beautiful animations and interactions in uh, CSS. Uh, to follow along, you can either click on the code open link uh, that you, you will find it in, the, in the video description and, and access the template that you can use to, to follow along, or you can download all the lessons templates on GitHub and there is always a link in the video description. We're going to be starting from the very basics. So if you're familiar with um, the syntax of CSS transitions, transforms and animations, you can skip this video and I'll see you in the next one. But if you're new to this, you should stick around because we are going to explain the very foundation of CSS animations. Okay, so if you have downloaded the lesson from uh, GitHub, you should open the index.html file and the style.scss file. Now, don't worry if the extension is not uh, CSS, but it's SCSS. This is basically a SAS file. So if you have never heard of styles, you can look it up on, on, on Google. It's uh, SASS. It's, uh, uh, in short, it's a way to give some extra powers to CSS. But don't worry because the stuff that we are writing here, it's uh, plain CSS. So you can uh, copy this stuff and use in a CSS file and it's still going to work. If I'm ever going to use a SAS feature, I will let you know. Okay, so let's analyze the structure. We have three objects with uh, the object class and then the one in the center has a class modifier of object animated. Okay. So first of all, let's talk about CSS transitions. Uh, a transition allows a property change in CSS to happen over a specified duration. So for example, the most basic example would be, um, let's change on hover the background color of this element from gray to blue, for example. Now, if we um, check the demo, the change is instantaneous. So it's an immediate change. With the transition, which by the way, uh, the name of the property is transition. And uh, to apply transition in the most basic way, we can just specify the duration, for example, 0 0.3, 0 0.5 seconds. You can actually also delete the zero. It will be 0 0.5 seconds and save. Now, if we check the demo again, the change is no longer instantaneous. Well, that's because the browser is smart enough to calculate all the key frames in between. So it's creating a smooth uh, change, a smooth transition. Now, let me, check, let me check the notes and then we should apply, okay, how to apply multiple transitions. Good. Uh, so you can apply a transition to a single property to uh, a list, an array of properties. Now, when you don't specify, when you just when you just specify the duration, you are by default applying a transition to all the properties that change for this element. So, for example, if we um, let's apply here to all the elements, both the radius of one m. And now on hover, let's change the border radius to four m. Okay. We haven't changed the value of the transition, but now when, when we mouse over the element, also the border radius is changing in uh, uh, over time, so with the a duration. So when you don't specify anything, the transition is applied to all the element. This is equivalent to writing all 0.5 seconds. You can also target a specific element, a specific property, sorry. For example, you want to apply only to uh, the transition only to the background color. You can do so. So you can write the property to which you want to apply the transition and the duration, then save. Now, if we check the demo, you'll see that the change in the border radius is uh, an immediate change, while the change in the background color is always happening with a transition. If you want to apply different durations to different properties, you can uh, use a comma to separate the properties. And now you can write here border radius and, for example, change this over two seconds. Now, if we check the demo again, now the change in the border radius is very slow and the duration is different compared to the one of the background color. 
And this is uh, um, okay. This is all about transitions. Let's move on. Once again, let's check the notes. Apply transition to multiple properties. So we have uh, the transformations. Okay, transformations are really cool. Like actually, let me remove. Let me comment out these uh, changes. Let me remove the transition as well. And let's animate. Let's transform the uh, object in the center. Okay, so we have the transform property, um, and then we have to use a transform function. So, which means what kind of transformation we want to apply, we can choose uh, among a scale. And then we have to pass a parameter. So it could be we were saying it could be a scale transformation. It could be a rotate transformation. It could be a translate if you want to move an element around. And it will be a skew, which is a bit less usual, but it's still very interesting. Um, and then you have to pass a parameter, which is the value of the transformation. So, for example, let's start from the most uh, simple one. Let's scale the element by 1.2. Uh, so it's 1.2, the original size. Uh, let's uh, apply a Z index of two to this element because we want it above the other elements. And um, here we go. Now you have the element transformed. One thing you will notice is that transformations don't affect the flow of the document, which means the space occupied by the um, transformed object is always the same. So uh, it's not moving around the other two boxes. If we were, for example, to uh, change the width of this element, for example, it would push away the other two boxes. With transformations, uh, that is not uh, going to happen. So we can either uh, scale an element and we can, uh, for example, scale it by 0 0.8 if you want to reduce the sides. Uh, we can rotate an element and in this case we can pass 45 degrees so it's a, a rotation by 45 degrees um, let me let me apply a transition oops, a transition of uh, 0.5 seconds 0.3 you want to make it snappier Okay, now let's change the rotation of to minus 45 degrees. And as you can see now, it's rotating anti-clockwise. You can also translate an element. And if you don't specify the direction of the translate function, and for example, we just use uh, 50 pixels, well, it's going to push the element. Let me comment this out and apply the translate function again. Well, it's going to push the element along the uh, positive x axis, positive direction of the x axis. If you use a negative value, well, it's going to move it in the opposite direction. What if you want to push an element down? Well, you can apply translate y of 50 pixels Oops. and save. And now it's going down. And once again, a negative value if you want to go up. And obviously, because we have translate y, there is also translate x. So this is the very basic of transforming elements. And uh, um, obviously, we can combine a, uh, transformations with uh, the transitions. And we can also apply multiple transformations on the, the same element. So for example, let's apply a transition of 0.3 second, meaning that th this transition is going to affect all the changes uh, applied to this element. And then when we mouse over the element, we are going to apply a transform. So we're going to first, we're going to scale the element um, always to 1.2. And then space, we're going to apply a rotation. So rotate of Let's give it a good spin of uh, 135 degrees and save. Now, when we mouse over the element, the element you'll see we have a combination of multiple uh, transforms. And uh, so we have a rotation and a scale at the same time. So to recap, uh, to recap, the transition is used to um, have a change happening over some specified time. 
The transform is a way to transform an object and these properties can be combined um, and uh, can work together. Uh, now the last properties, the last property we want to talk about is the animation property. Now animations are a bit more complex. Let's check the nodes for one second. Okay, so we have applied the different transformations. Now we have the animations uh, definitions. So animations like transitions allow you to change the value of CSS properties over time. But unlike transitions, with animation we can specify multiple states for the CSS property. Uh, what, uh, what's the meaning of this? So when we apply a transition, we can just switch between uh, two states. So the first state um, is the one defined in the original object here. And then if we um, consider any kind of event, for example, a hover event, uh, so by using a hover um, selector, we can change the values of uh, some CSS properties. So we have a status one and a status two. We can't have a third state, for example. Uh, with animations, we can have as many states as we want. So these states, uh, if you're familiar with tools like After Effects, these states are called keyframes. So for example, if we apply an animation to this element here, animation, first we have to uh, define the, declare the name of the animation. For example, animation example. And then following, we have to specify the duration. For example, uh, let's go for one second. Now, nothing is happening because we haven't defined the animation at all. So to define an animation, we have to use uh, the keyframes, the keyframes rule. So keyframes followed by the name of the animation. Now let's go from 0%. So at the beginning of the animation, we want for example, a, an opacity of one, transform of scale uh, one. So nothing is really happening. Uh, actually, let me change the border radius to 50%. We're gonna turn these uh, squares into uh, circles. And now, at 100%, meaning at the end of the animation, we want to make some changes. We want to change the opacity from 1 to 0 and the scale from 1 to 2, for example, and save. Now, once again, nothing is happening. And that's because uh, um, the animation is not specified in a, a selector, for example. So we are not targeting an event. And in, in cases like this one, the animation happens when the page is loaded by the browser. So if we refresh the page, you will see the animation happening. So uh, the, 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 the circle is starting with an opacity of one and it's ending with an opacity of zero. And it's starting with a scale value of one and it's, it's ending with a scale value of two. When the animation is over, so after one second, these um, two, pro these two uh, values, the opacity zero and the scale uh, of two are reset to the default values of these properties. Uh, basically, uh, they depend on what is specified on the original element because we are not specifying anything about opacity and uh, uh, scale. Well, uh, it's resetting to the initial value of these, of these properties. We can change this if we want by uh, using a, a keyword here, which is forwards. Forwards when applied to an animation means when the animation is over, apply the latest values of the animation. So if we save and refresh again, you will see that now at the end of the, of the animation, it's uh, as if these two properties here with these values were actually applied to the original element here by using the forwards keyword. Now, because we're using just two keyframes, 0% and 100%, we could also replace them with from and to. Okay. But we were saying before that with animation, we can apply multiple uh, uh, keyframes, unlike uh, with the transitions. So let's make a different example. So we want a 0% keyframe 
where the opacity is uh, 1 and scale is 1. Then we want a 50% keyframe where the opacity is 0 0.5 and the scale is 2. And then we want a final keyframe, 100%, where the opacity is 1 and the scale is 1. Now, because 0% and 100% are identical, we can just remove this stuff here and we can separate these two keyframes with a comma because they share the same values and save. Now, if we actually, instead of refreshing the browser, we can move the animation uh, under the hover selector. So the, anima the animation is going to be triggered by uh, the user hovering over the circle in the center. And now if we check the demo, when we mouse over this element, there is the animation. So it's starting with a opacity one, scale one. In the, in the middle, at 50%, we have a scale of two and opacity of 0 0.5. And then it's ending always with an opacity of one and a scale of one. Now, this is something to notice when you mouse over, the animation stops abruptly. And uh, well, this is something you have to consider when you create animations. And this is something we will deal with later on with other uh, tutorials. So, so this is all about the basics of animating stuff in CSS. There is so much more uh, to this, uh, but instead of just animating uh, empty, empty squares and uh, you know, gray balls, we can just um, do some cool stuff later on in other tutorials and cover so much more by creating uh, real UI uh, components, real UI elements. So that's all for this uh, first video and um, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.